Yeah, I think at the beginning, I just uh, want to ask uh, everybody a couple of questions. So first is, uh, how many years or months uh, have you been coding or learning coding? So you may answer this question via Zoom chat or your speaker, whichever you like. So uh, I'll start from myself. So uh, I have, uh, the first time I touched coding was uh, like a long time ago when I was in college. Uh, so the first language I touched was uh, C and it was uh, like a college test. Uh, so and then after many years, uh, I uh, which uh, I started uh, about uh, in around uh, 2016, 2015, 2016-ish. So I started uh, learning from Free Code Camp. Oh, 10 years ago. Oh, I started, uh, so like, uh, so now I have been learning coding for about five years-ish, off and on. Uh, so, I started uh, mostly from free, free code camp and I got uh, my uh, front end development certificate from free, free code camp uh, in 2018. But once I got it, uh, there were part of uh, it just kind of expired. So I started to learn some new stuff. Uh, but uh, learning coding uh, was fun and useful. Uh, so, um, so so, so let's see other people. Uh, so how about you? So I can go next. I uh, started, I think in about 1990, 1991, when I was a kid, playing around with some GeoBasic, QBasic. That's been quite a while ago. I didn't really get into it anymore until college. I took an intro to C class and that was in 2003, which doesn't sound like that long ago until you realize that was 17 years ago. So I would say that's about wow. how long I've been doing it. That's a long time. <laughs> yeah, so I'm funny, I'm presenting to professionals <laughs> as a non-professional. Yeah, yeah. So like, uh, like Kimberly, I taught myself basic when I was like uh, 14, back in the mid 90s. and. Um, but I kind of gave it a rest for a long time, and I've been focusing on learning coding in different ways um, for maybe six, ten years now. Cool, a long time. All right, so uh, another question is, uh, how long have you been learning about software testing or code testing? So I have been learning testing, um, I will, um, not a long time, but I've been reading about testing uh, from time to time. Um, just to, yeah, uh, touch the, listen to somebody else talk about testing, uh, like using Jasmine before. Uh, yeah, and I read, read a little bit about testing. So I don't know if uh, any of you guys are using testing at work or learning testing yourself. I've been doing some test-driven development for my classwork at OCCC, um, mostly voluntarily. That's not really part of the curriculum, but I started using XUnit for my C-sharp code. And I've been reading a bit in Cucumber for behavior-driven development, though it's mostly oriented towards, the book I've got is mostly oriented towards. But yeah, I'm, I'm really into adopting the test-driven um, mentality. So that's been less, less than, than a, a year for me to be getting serious about actually implementing test and code. Of course. So if uh, we have any questions, we can ask you. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're the expert here, huh? <laughs> All right. All right. So I think uh, we can begin uh, to, yeah, about uh, automatic testing with much Mocha now. So Mocha is a uh, a JavaScript test framework for Node.js programs featuring browser support, asynchronous testing test coverage reports, and the use of uh, any assertion library. You can check it out on this website, I mean, in, uh, Wikipedia. So um, there are several 
um, development techniques. Uh, so I'm going to talk about two of them. So one is BDD, the other one is TDD. So TDD is a text-driven development. This means uh, writing a test that fails because um, the specified functionality doesn't exist. Then writing the simplest code that can make the test pass, then refactoring to move duplication, etc. You repeat this red green refactor loop over and over until you have a complete feature. BBD is a behavior driven development. This means uh, creating an executable specification that fails because the feature doesn't exist, then writing the simplest code that can make the spec pass. You repeat this until a release candidate is ready to ship. So uh, the main difference uh, between BDD and the TDD is uh, TDD is uh, um, so more uh, like uh, developers would would write it uh, to would write the test and uh, then write some code to pass the test. Uh, BDD is behavior, so it's more like uh, more intuitive. So some non profession non um, programmers could also write. Uh, behavior um, specification and then uh, the developers would just implement the behavior specification um, so uh, the key difference is the scope tdd is a development practice while bdd is a team method methodology in TDD, the developers write the tests, while in BDD, the uh, automated specifications are created by users or testers, with the developers uh, wiring them to the code under test. For small co-located developer-centric teams, TDD and BDD are effectively the same. So, so why are we care about code testing? Because uh, understanding code quality before, because uh, testing code testing can improve code quality. And understanding code quality before working on a code project is like building a house on a quality foundation so that the big bad wolf can't blow it down. So, um, Anyone have anything to say about code quality, like your own experience or something like that? All right. All right, then we can check. Uh, to start learning about code quality, you may check this out, JavaScript info code quality. Mm, I'm going to stop this and uh, click on the link. Let's see. Good luck. Present the tab. OK, so. Well, recently I have been reading uh, JavaScript.info to learn more than JavaScript. I've learned JavaScript before in an old way. Now I'm learning more than JavaScript uh, at uh, JavaScript.info. Uh, I think it's a uh, it's actually a uh, kind of like a book. You can buy their PDF version, or you can just read a chapter by chapter on their website for free. So they have a chapter titled Code Quality, and uh, it uh, explains in details about uh, how to improve your code quality, like uh, debugging in Chrome, coding style, comments, how do you write comments, whether or not you should write comments at some point, Ninja code, how you can make your code uh, cool or hard to, uh, mm -hmm. to guess, uh, to understand. And then the one is automated 
and then it's polyfills. Polyfills is like um, uh, if you add new features or new function to your um, project, uh, what you can do, you can use polyfills, something like that. Okay, so let's uh, click on automated testing with the Mocha. Automated testing with the Mocha, automated testing will be used in further tasks. And it's also widely used in real projects. So the further tasks means uh, uh, more tasks in the later chapters of this book or of this website, javascript.info. So why we need the tests? When we write a function, we can usually imagine what it should do. Uh, which parameters give which results. During development, we can check the function by uh, running it and comparing the outcome with the expected one. For instance, we can do it in the console. We can use console.log and uh, check if the result is uh, what we expected. If something is wrong, then we fix the code, run again, check the result, and so on till it works. But such manual reruns are imperfect. When testing a code by manual reruns, it's easy to miss something. So for example, a developer, a developer could uh, test F1 works, but then after he, uh, but F2 didn't work. But uh, after he changed the code, he just tested, tested F2, but he forgot to test F1 again. So that, might be, that, might, that may lead to some uh, error lead to some error. Um, so that's very typical. When we develop something, we keep a lot of possible use cases in mind. But it's hard to expect a programmer to check all of them manually after every change. So it becomes easy to fix one thing and break another one. Automated testing means that tests are written separately in addition to the code. They run our functions in various ways and uh, compare results with the expected. Behavior-driven development. Let's start with a technique named behavior-driven development, or in short, BDD. BDD is three things in one, tests and uh, documentation and uh, examples. So if you use a BDD technique, you in the end, you will get uh, tests and the documentation and examples of uh, how to um, how to use your code. To understand BDD, we are examining a practical case of uh, development. Development of uh, PAL, the spec PAL stand, here stands for, uh, is short for power. So we want to make a function PAL XN, which is uh, to calculate x to the power of n, x raised to the nth power. That raises n to an integer power n. We assume that n is greater than or equal to 0. That task is just an example. There is the double star or uh, yeah, operator in JavaScript that can do this. But here we concentrate on the development flow that can be applied to more complex tasks as well. So we don't use the double star uh, operator for uh, x raised to power n, to raise x to power n, because we want to just explain how to use this power function as an example to, to, to do the testing. Before creating the code of PAL, we can imagine what the function should do and uh, describe it. So now we still don't have the code of, of PAL yet. So, but we will start from uh, uh, describe what the function should do first. Uh, such description is called a specification or in short, a spec and the contains descriptions of use cases together with the tests for them. 
like this one. Describe how function it raises to nth power function, assert equal power to three eight. So this is a test. This is not a, uh, the declaration, the, the code for the function pow. This is a test to test the pow. So Hana, any questions? I have a, yeah, I have a question. Uh -huh. um, yeah, sure. I was just thinking about functions and I was thinking about a phenomenon I, I've, I've heard of before like a, uh, called aliasing where you might have a function that is sampling at a different rate and so it's actually not it, it it turns out that the rate at which it's sampling would give a different function than the actual function that is being observed so i was going to ask how many assertions would you make for a function before you you're um assured that it is behaving correctly uh, that's a good question. Um, I think uh, mm, uh, I think uh, that would depend on the situation. So, um, like uh, you can talk to your team about that, and uh, you can lay out many many uh, testing uh, specification items. Uh, but when to stop uh, is depends. It depends on your team discussion. Um, so for this one, uh, you might think, okay, when n goes to infinity, uh, it should stop. <laughs> or when uh, yeah. x, when x goes to infinity, it should it should stop. So um, for this example, uh. I am not sure about this example. Um, uh, if you think, uh, if you want n to be smaller than something, you can just let n stop there. And if you want you want x to stop smaller than something, you can let x stop there. Uh, so. Okay. Um, so, you, so you can give it a range of values for it to test and then stop. Uh, that's what I think. Uh, uh, anyone else thinks differently or have more uh, have better ideas? I think that's that was a pretty good explanation. Um, like when you mentioned BDD, you're behavior driven. You okay. should keep in mind all of your different behaviors, and you should have an assert case for each behavior. Like, there's no point to having a separate assertion for you know. POW 2, 2 is 4 and POW 2, 3 is 8, right? Because if one of them works, it probably should work for all of them. But you might want to check what happens if you pass a negative power um, or a not a number power. But yeah, generally, it's probably up to your team, like Hong mentioned. It, if your team is fine with what you write. <laughs> yeah, it seems probably. a little subjective. But it, I mean, I guess it makes sense. Just consult with your team. Because I was thinking of, again, another example would be if you were trying to model some type, and these are all kind of math kind of functions that the ones I'm thinking about, but um, you could have, and the beginning of a sequence could give you the wrong impression that it's it's one sequence when it's not. So like if you if you start testing in the very beginning, you might not piece out that, that no, this is a different sequence altogether. All right. Any other questions? All right, then we'll continue. Yeah, that was a good question. Yeah, I was thinking about that. I was thinking, what if n goes to infinity? <laughs> Stuff like that. So yeah. Okay. A spec has three main building blocks that you can see above. Describe title function. What functionality we are describing? So the title is the name of the function that uh, we are testing. Uh, in our case, the function is a uh, power. Uh, 
describe title function is used to group workers the eight the eight sorry the eight blocks. So workers means mainly the specific test, the function to run to test the, each specific uh, behavior. So it use case description function. The title of it, we in a human readable we uh, in in a human readable way uh, describe the particular case and. The the argument is a function that tests it. So the it call identifies each individual test, but by, by itself, it does not tell Mocha anything about how your test suite is structured. How, your, how you use the describe call is what gives structure to your test suite. Uh, so here, so this crib just group all of the uh, single tests that it uh, does. So, and here uh, for it, uh, so you can see describe, and then follow the describe is followed by a, a noun, which is uh, the name of the function. And it is followed by usually by a, a verb or a verb phrase. So it here is kind of you can you can think it like a noun or pronoun it, and then it raises to nth power. Uh, but like in just just is another testing framework. Just just in just uh, it is an alias of test, and they use it like the same way. So you can also think like it here means the test, the test starts here. So it test, they are the same in just. So yeah. Mm. Okay. Assert equal value one, value two. Uh, the code inside it block, uh, if the implementation is correct, should uh, execute without errors. So functions assert uh, star are used to check whether power works as expected. Right here, we are using one of them, assert equal. It compares arguments and uh, yields an error if uh, they are not equal. Here, it checks that the result of power two, three equals eight. There are other types of uh, comparisons and checks that we'll add later. So, um, Describe and it, these two keywords are from, uh, you can get them from uh, Mocha and uh, assert. Assert here, you get assert from, uh, you can get it from Chai. Chai is, uh, mm, we will talk about Chai later. So, The specification can be executed and uh, it will run the test specified in it block. We'll see that later. The development flow. The flow of development usually looks at this. An initial spec is written with a test for the most basic functionality. So we already did that one. The initial spec is this one. We already did it. And then step two is uh, an initial implementation is created. So later we will just create uh, an initial implementation, which will be uh, it's the initial implementation, which will be the declaration of uh, power of the function power. That's how you implement your spec in your code. So three, to check whether it works, we run the testing framework Mocha. Mocha is a testing framework um, that runs the spec while the functionality is not complete. Errors are displayed. We make uh, corrections until everything works. Now we have a working initial implementation with the tests. We add uh, more use cases to the spec, probably 
not yet supported by the implementations. Tests start to fail. Uh, and then we go back to step three, update the implementation till tests give no errors. Repeat step three to six till the functionality is ready. So the development is a uh, uh, iterative. Uh, iterative. Uh, we write the spec, implement it, make sure tests pass, then write more tests, make sure they work, etc. Uh, at the end, we have both a working implementation and a tests for it. Let's see this development flow in our practical case. The first step is already complete. We have an initial spec for PAL. Now, before making the implementation, let's use a few JavaScript libraries to run the tests, just to see that they are working. So the spec in action here, here in the tutorial, we will be using the following JavaScript libraries for tests. Mocha, the core framework, it provides common testing functions, including describe and it, and the main function that runs the tests. Chai, uh, the library with many assertions. It allows to use a lot of different assertions. For now, we need only assert.equal. Sina, uh, a, a library to spy over functions, uh, emulate built-in functions, and more. We will need it much later. Uh, okay. These libraries are suitable for both in-browser and server-side testing. Here we will consider the browser variant. So we will just look, into, look at the browser uh, testing. So the full HTML page with these frameworks and the path specific is it like this. So doc type HTML, and then in the head, we add a mocha CSS to show results. So you can see it's a mocha CSS. And uh, then we add a mocha framework code, like here. And then we mocha set up a, a BDD, behavior driven development. This is uh, the minimum setup. Mm, and then we add a chai here, chai.js. And then chai has a lot of stuff. Let's make a cert global. So we let a cert uh, uh, is assigned chai.assert so that way we can use the uh, chai. Mm, and uh, so function power xn. Function code is to be written, it's empty right now. So the script with the tests describe it. So test.js, so we, we, we write our test in this file, test.js. So the, like uh, the, the initial uh, spec we wrote here, this part goes to the test. .js here. You can write whatever you like in this test.js and then run it later. So id equals uh, mocha. This one uh, gives you the element uh, which will contain test results because mocha will run the test in this element whose id is mocha. And then run test mocha.run. Okay. The page can be divided into five parts. The head add third party libraries and the styles for tests. The script with uh, the function to test in our case with the code for PAL. The tests in our case uh, an external script test.js that has described PAL, it stuff like that. Uh, the HTML element dev ID equals mocha, div ID equals mocha will be used by mocha to output results. The tests are started by the command mocha.run. So any questions here so far? So if I run the test, will it pass?
I think so, it won't because the function hasn't been defined yet. Yes. Yeah, right. I won't. Mm. Uh, yeah, so let's see the result is uh, x. Let's let's check it in Plunker. Plunker is uh, like a online editor uh, that you can use just for some uh, simple code. Probably not good for very complete complex code, but for simple code, it should be fine. It should be enough. So this is our code. Uh, the function is just empty. So if we run it. Oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry. I need to change my, okay. I think I'll just share my, share my, uh, let's see, where is it? I'll just share my uh, screen. Um, so if I'm understanding this correctly, um, the, the, as you iteratively improve the number of definitions that you have in Mocha, you're describing the full features you're expecting out of the function. So if you want it to throw an error, if the numbers stay out of range for the data type it's going to use, or you want to disallow negative numbers, you would describe that. You would describe, you know, the, the error message that comes out if you give it that input. And so it kind of becomes like documentation almost to where you could just provide the tests to the user the and then this would function in, in that way. Is, is that correct? Um, uh, I'm sorry. Can you say that to question again? I, I was, I uh, yeah. It's okay. Um, I was just asking like, the, like as you iteratively build your your behavior descriptions, you define all the outer and inner limits of the the function. So like if it's supposed to throw an error, say like if the input's too large for the data type, or if it's um, if it's a negative number and it's not allowed to take negative numbers, then you would describe you know if I give it a negative number, it throws this error. And so then you, as you build that functionality, eventually the simplest solution is the correct one. Uh, yeah, we will we will talk about the negative number in the future, but I can just find it, find that part, so you will see. Oh, you don't have to skip ahead in your presentation. I was just uh, making sure yeah. I understood what it was doing. So uh, if uh, it's a negative number, uh, we can uh, we can set uh, some test for if it's a if it's a negative number. See for negative number, and the result is none not a number. So you can add this description and uh, and uh, uh, when n is negative number, negative one, then the test will, if the code is uh, good and then it will pass. If the code is not good on that point, uh, at that point, uh, so then the, the, the code will fail and then you, you will just look into that uh, part to uh, correct it. So you can right. add, a, yeah. So once once you fully describe the desired output, the simplest possible code will be the correct the correct solution. It'll be an ex, an exponent an exponent function. Like if, if if at first like you describe like oh I put in a two and I get an eight, then you've described you know return eight if I get a two. But the, you know as you build it up, it seems like the simplest code gradually becomes like what it. What's actually supposed to be? Uh, the code is not uh, uh, to get the simplest code. It's, it's to get the code that passed uh, every test. Right, uh, right. So, uh, so the code in the end could uh, become more than just uh, one function or more than more than just one line. Uh, so, and uh, also there are uh, the code. Uh, but to make the code perfect for every situation that we need. Uh, so uh, for for code quality, uh, the simpler the, the code is, the better. So, but for test function, for test result purpose, uh, the code needs to pass all of the tests. I think I understand. Okay, cool. Uh,
Yeah, so now we can say, yeah, we can run this code, run this one, yeah. And I clicked on this button, so it runs in Plunker. Can you see the code in Plunker now? Okay, cool. Yeah, so this is code. Now we, we run it. It says uh, assertion error expected undefined to equal eight. So let's see what's in our test. Our in our test, we want uh, we we want uh, pile two three equals eight. But since pile is not defined, pile is still empty. Pile is here. Pile's function code is to be written empty now. So the error, uh, the assertion assertion error tells us that expected undefined to. Uh, equal eight. So the undefined is, uh, let's see, it's in test.js line four, uh, test.js line four, line four, which is, uh, okay, assert.equal pile, and then it's uh, pile two, three is undefined. So that's the error here. So now let's define a uh, pile. So as for now, the test fails, that's an error, that's logic. We have an empty function code in PAL. So PAL23 returns undefined instead of eight. For the future, let's note that there are more high level tasks, uh, more, more high level test runners like uh, Karma and others that make it easy to auto run many different tests. Initial implementation, let's make a simple implementation of PAL for tests to pass. So we, we kind of cheated here. So function PAL, we want it to equal to eight. We want it to equal to eight. So we just make PAL return eight. So let's test it now. So, so we have uh, our function PAL return eight. That's it, and then we run the test again. So pow raises to nth power. So see our test raises to nth power and a check mark. That means it passed the test. Uh, improving the spec. Uh, what we've done is definitely a cheat. The function does not work an attempt to calculate PAL 3.4 would give an incorrect result, but test pass. Yeah, so if we, yeah, because three to the power four is not eight. Yeah, but the situation is quite typical. It happens in practice, test pass, but the function works wrong. Our spec is imperfect. We need to add more use cases to it. Let's add one more test to check that power three, four equals 81. Three to the power of four is uh, 81. We can select one of two ways to organize the test here. One first, uh, one the first variant, add one more assert into the same eight. So let's we add assert equal power three, four, 81. And the second one is uh, to make two tests. Eight, two raises to power three is eight. And eight, three raised to power four is 81. So which uh, variant uh, would you prefer? The first one or the second one? So the second one is easier for to test out the code. The first one might need a debug later. So we, we, should, we will choose the second one here. The principal difference is that when a search triggers an error, the it block immediately terminates. So in the first variant, if the first assert fails, then we'll never see the result of the second assert. Because if uh, in the first variant, if the first test fails, then the second test, a certain equal power three, four, 81 won't run. 
But for the second variant, like we have two eight here, the first assert equal path two three eight won't affect the the other assert in another eight statement or function. Making tests separate is useful to get more information about uh, what's going on. So the second variant is better. And uh, besides that, there's one more rule that's good to follow. One test checks one thing. If we look at uh, tests and uh, see two independent checks uh, in it, it's better to split it into two simpler ones. So let's continue with the second variant. The result. So two raised to power three is eight. Uh, three raised to power four is 81. As error is uh, expect eight to equal 81 because our function right now is just uh, return eight. So the 81, three raised to power four is 81. Just that this test just failed. We could, uh, as we could expect, the second test failed. Sure, our function always return eight. Yeah, well, the asserted expects 81. Improving the implementation. Let's write something more real for tests to pass. So power xn, let result equal to one, let i equal zero, it is for loop. And the result is just uh, uh, during each uh, iteration, the result will just multiply x and then return result. So i is less than n here, so it's just x to the power n. So to be sure that the function works well, let's test it for more values. Instead of writing eight blocks manually, we can generate them in four. So describe how function and the function make test let uh, expected uh, uh, equals x, x, x. So x in the power three is expected. Assert equal power x three expected. So and then for loop make test x. So so here we uh, declare make test function, and then we use it in for loop. So for each x like x is one, then we one in the power three is expected, which is one times one times one, which is one. And then that's the description of uh, it. And then assert equal to, to check the, the equality. Mm. So and then x equals two, we do that again, and three until x equals uh, five. All right, so now the result is, uh, x one in the power of three, okay, the pass. Let's check it here. Uh, yeah, so, and uh, we can see the test. Okay, it's like that. And then run the test. So the pass, it passed. Okay. Any questions so far? All right, cool. Okay. Now, next he describe. We are going to add even more tests, but before that, let's note that the helper function make test and the four should be grouped together. We won't need a make test in other tests. It's needed only in four. Their common task is to uh, check how power raises into the given power. Grouping is done with the nested describe. Mainly, we just uh, we nest we nest uh, the function make test and for we nest this function make test and for as a 
into a group, and uh, we use a, a sub describe. Describe raises x to power three function, and then you see the kind of orange pink ish uh, long rectangle, this here and here. So from here to here, this is the uh, the uh, the group of uh, yeah this is a you can say a sub sub describe yeah so and uh, outside of this uh, uh, group of uh, make text test and uh, for you can add uh, more tests to follow here uh, both describe and it can be added so you can add more uh, like a uh, sub you can add more groups here. And uh, uh, in other groups, the make test function won't affect other groups because this is uh, uh, the scope of make test is just in this raises x to power three, this function block, this block. It won't affect other uh, groups of test. The next hit describe defines a new subgroup of tests. In that put, we can see the title, the indentation. So now we run, before we run, the, we, we saw this one, and then we run the function again with the uh, subgroup of tests. We will see the indentation, like a power and then raised x to power three and then more coming yeah just because we use the describe raise this x to power three a subgroup in the future we can add more eight and it's describe on the top level with the helper functions of their own they won't see make test so here helper functions are just uh, the functions inside uh, it we call them helper functions to help the test. Yeah, like assert dot equal, this is a helper function. Yeah. Uh, and also in call inside the describe. Yeah, for is also a helper function. Yeah, it's inside the describe. Yeah, just functions that will, will work, yeah. And in the future, we can add more it and describe on the top level with the helper functions of their own. They won't see make test. Yeah, other function, other um, subgrouped functions or helper functions won't see the other subgroup, the, uh, the other functions in other subgroups. Before, after, and uh, before each, after each, we can set we can set up before after functions that execute before after running tests, and uh, also before each after each functions that uh, execute before after every eight. For instance, so describe test function before alert testing started, before all tests, after alert testing finished, after all tests, before each alert, before a test. Enter a test after each alert, after a test, exit a test. Test uh, it, test one, alert one, test two, uh, alert two. So the running sequence will be like this. So testing started before all tests before. So, and then before each. Uh, and then one, and then after each, and then before each two, and then after each, and then after. So this is the order mainly before is uh, the code that will run before the whole testing. And then before each is the code that will run before each test, like a before each eight uh, testing function, before it, each eight the testing function, yeah. And then after each, and then after each, yeah. And then after is the 
the code that will run uh, after the whole testing is done. Oh, um, yeah, you can open the example in the sandbox later and you will see this. So usually before each, after each, and before, after are used to perform initial initialization, zero out counters, or do something else between the tests or test groups. Extending the spec, the basic functionality of PAL is complete. Okay. The first uh, iteration of the de development is done. So as uh, the function PAL xn is meant to work with the positive integer values n. To indicate a mathematical error, JavaScript functions usually return not a number n a n. Let's do the same for invalid values of n. Let's first add the behavior to the spec. To describe PAL, we add behavior first. So, so we do the spec first, and then we 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 write the we go back to the function PAL and then write the function, write the code in the function. So describe PAL function for uh, it for negative. So we did some uh, it already, and then next it. It for negative n, the result is not a number. Assert is not a number, power uh, power to negative one. Here means uh, we want to test if uh, power, if power to negative one is not a number. And then for non-integer n, the result is not a number. So assert is not a number, power to 1.5. So again, we want to test uh, uh, if power to uh, 1.5 is not a number. The result of, with the new test is like this. If n uh, is negative one, the result is not a number. It didn't pass because if n is negative one, let's check the code. So if n is negative one, we have the power and uh, here, so let's run the code, run the test first. So if n is, let's see the test. If n is uh, negative, the result is not a number. So pow two negative one. So pow two negative one. The result is. Uh, um. Just one, right? Because uh, this for loop won't 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 do anything because negative one i is zero i i is greater than negative one. So it then the result is still one. So result is one. So one uh, power two negative one. We it's not a number. No power two negative one is one. So one is a number. So uh. If uh, n is negative, the result is uh, not a number. This test does not pass because expect one to be not a number, which is uh, not true. So the test returns a uh, false. So the pass, the test didn't pass. And for n is not an integer, the result is not a number. So two, one point five. Again, two one point five power two one point five. We will get the result uh, as uh, four, I believe. Oh, uh, I believe it's four. Yeah, yeah, four. Because uh, I when I equals to one, one is still less than one point five. So you have you will times four. You will times two two times uh, twice so you'll get four so four is uh expect four to be not a number which is wrong so the pass the test the test didn't pass so so how can we make the test pass i'm gonna uh change the code again so the other test just passed the newly added test test fail because our implementation does not support them. That's how BDD is done. First, we write filling tests and then make an implementation for them. Uh, 
other assertions. Note the assertion assert is dot is not a number, it checks for not a number. There are other assertions in chai as well. For instance, the equal, the strict equal, the not equal, dot is true, dot is false, is false. And so the full list is in this doc. You can check it out later if you like. So we should add a couple of lines to pile. So if n is less than zero, then return out a number. If math dot round n is not equal to n, which means n is not an integer, then return not a number. So we added these two lines into the code of our function pile, and then we test it again, and then it should pass this time. So it, it passed. So uh, yeah, because we added these two lines. Yeah. Okay, uh, summary. In BDD, the spec goes first, followed by implementation. At the end, we have both the spec and the code. The spec can be used in three ways as tests. They guarantee that the code works correctly. Two, as docs, the titles of describe and eight tell what the function does. The titles is just what's in the quote, what's written in the quote. Like uh, this described pile, and then for negative n, the result is not a number. This just the titles describes what the function does. So it, it can be taken like a doc. As examples, the tests are actually working examples showing how a function can be used. With the spec, we can safely improve, change, even rewrite the function from scratch and make sure it, it still works right. That's especially important in large projects when a function is used in many places. When we change such a function, there's just no way to manually check if every place that uses it still works right. With that test, people have two ways to perform the change no matter what. And then our users meet bugs as we probably fail to check something manually. Two, if the punishment for errors is harsh as there are no tests, people become afraid to modify such functions and then the code becomes outdated. No one wants to get into it. Not good for development. Uh, automatic testing helps to avoid these problems. If the project is covered with tests, there's just no such problem. After any changes, we can run tests and see a lot of checks made in a matter of seconds. Besides, a well-tested code has better architecture. Naturally, that's because auto-tested code is easier to modify and improve. But there's also another reason. To write tests, the code should be organized in such a way that every function has a clearly described task, well-defined input and output. That means a good architecture from the beginning. In real life, that's sometimes not that uh, easy. Sometimes it's uh, difficult to write a spec before the, actual, before the actual code because it's not yet clear how it should behave. But in general, writing tests makes development faster and more stable. Later in the tutorial, you will meet many tasks with uh, ta uh, tests baked in, so you'll see more practical examples. That's about the whole book, the whole website, javascript.income.info. Uh, writing tests requires good JavaScript knowledge, but we are just starting to learn it. So to settle down everything as of now, you are not required to write tests, but you should already be able to read them, even if they are a little bit more complex than in this chapter. So, so we still have a task. What's wrong in the test? Do you want to do this one or I can stop here? It's 4 p.m. You can do this one later by yourself or, or we can check this out together here. I say let's go ahead and do it. It's four o'clock, so if people need to leave, that's fine, but I would kind of like to look at this right now. 
Okay, sure. Yeah. So let's thank do you it so much, Colin. I have another meeting to get to, but th thank you guys so much. Yeah. See you next time. Wait, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. See you. Okay, so what's wrong in the test? So what's wrong in the test of power below? You can see, yeah, anything wrong? Yeah, we mentioned that um, we want each test to separate from each other. That way, when one, when one of them uh, gets error, then it won't block the later ones. Because if we put them together like this, if the first one failed, then the later ones will stop run, stop running. So, so let's check this solution. Check the solution. So, the test demonstrates one of the temptations a developer meets when writing tests. What we have here is actually three tests, but laid out as a single function with three asserts. Sometimes it's easier to write this way, but if an error occurs, it's much less obvious what went wrong. If an error happens in the middle of a complex exec uh, execution flow, then we'll have to figure out the data at that point. We'll actually have to debug the test. Mm -hmm. It would be much better to break the test into multiple eight blocks with clearly written inputs and outputs, like this one. We use describe. Here, the first one, we didn't use describe. So we use a describe. It might be a sub subgroup of another describe, but uh, of an outer side describe. But it's, it's OK. We can just look at this piece of code. So describe raises, n, raises x to power n function 8, eight 5 in the power of uh, 1 equals 5, and then function. So and then assert equal power 5, 1, 5. And then also the same for 5, 2, and then we use 25. And 5, 3, five, three we use uh, 125 instead of uh, using um, this, like a result, changing result to, uh, yeah, instead of using this one. So we will just, we'll just write out the result for each test. The, the expected result for each test here. Okay, we replaced the single eight with the describe and a group of eight blocks. Now, if something fails, we would see clearly what the data was. Also, we can isolate a single test and run it in standalone mode by writing it only instead of eight. So describe raises x to power n and then eight for five in the eight, five in the power of one equals five, and then eight dot only five in the power of two equals 25. So it's not only here, Mocha will run only this block. So, so if it's hard for you to uh, get comfortable with this um, pattern, then you can think about ingest eight is an alias for test. So in just, uh, just is that another uh, testing frame. So in just uh, eight is an alias of test. So you can think eight as test. So test only, test only this part. Or you can just, if you feel comfortable, you can just, just do eight dot only. But if in your mind, you can think, okay, eight means test, so test only this part. So eight only, by in Mocha, you have to use eight here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, yeah, so if we you add uh, only here, then the result will only show uh, five in the power of two equals 25. All right. All right, that's all my uh, presentation. Oh, by the way, also there are other JavaScript testing frame, frameworks like uh, Jasmine, just uh, Puppeteer, QUnit, etc. So if you like, you can check them out. Yeah. Okay, that's all my um, presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna give it to Kimberly.